Welcome to the Dum Dum News Channel. I'm your host, Dum Dum. Today, we're going to be watching the Judge and Derek Chauvin case speak to the jurors. But before I get started, I want to say super thank you to all the viewers and all the suggestions. And we got another subscriber, so the subscriber count goes up. If you're new to the channel, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and leaving your comments below. I appreciate that. Give the video a thumbs up and share with a friend. Now, on the first article I wanted to cover, it says, Gavin strikes again. Governor Newsom sparks fury by saying he's a Zoom school parent, even though his four children returned to private school in November. This is the governor out of California doing it again do as i say not as i do we've seen it time and time again from this guy the last i heard they were doing a petition recall on him i have no idea where that stands but hopefully it'll go through and they can get someone in there that can help california get out of the mess that it's in all right so now on to the main video this is video from day two of the Derek chauvin trial he is the officer who put his knee on george floyd now the judge is going to be speaking to the jurors during pre-selection in america when you turn 18 you will start to get these letters as a summons to be part of jury on certain trials i've always been interested in the law and court proceedings and when you watch this video you're going to learn quite a bit about how they work and the law now, the last thing I want to mention before I play the video is that in America, people are innocent until proven guilty. Uh, my name is Pete Cahill, and I'm one of the judges of the district court. And you have been summoned, as, as you know, as potential jurors in the case of State of Minnesota versus Derek Chauvin, which is a criminal case related to the death of George Floyd on May 25th, 2020. Now, a person charged with a crime has a right to a fair trial before an impartial judge and an impartial jury. In order to make sure that the juries, jurors who are selected are impartial, the law provides that the court and the attorneys for the parties may ask questions to all prospective jurors, which must be answered under oath. First, thank you for filling out and returning the questionnaire that was mailed to you. Your contribution to the important and serious matter at hand is best assured by continuing to provide full and complete answers to the questions that you will be asked today and possibly tomorrow. Those questions will follow up on issues from the questionnaire and possibly other topics. Now, after the questioning is over, the attorneys will have the right to excuse some of you uh, from service on this jury, and I may excuse others of you for what is called cause. It does not mean that you are not a fair person, and you should not take offense in being excused. I also ask that you not take any offense to any question that you might be asked. We must pry, to some extent, in order to explore some opinions you might hold and to hear about experiences that you have had that might affect your ability to serve in this case. The defendant, Mr. Chauvin, has been charged with murder in the second degree and manslaughter in the second degree. During trial, charges may be added to or subtracted from these charges because that's in the normal course, but as it's, those are the charges as it stands today. Now, to the charges, the defendant has entered a plea of not guilty, which is a denial of each and every material allegation in the charges. And I'm going to have the participants introduce themselves in the case, uh, beginning with the attorneys for the state. And Mr. Nelson, uh, if you could introduce yourself and your team. Good afternoon. This, uh, my name is Eric Nelson. I'm attorney for Eric Chauvin. Behind me is my assistant, Amy Voss. Right, thank you. Now, there may be other attorneys from the state also appearing, and so I'll ask you to keep in mind whether you know uh, Matthew Frank, Attorney General Keith Ellison, Aaron Eldridge, uh, Attorney Jerry Blackwell, or anybody else who works for the Attorney General's office. Is there anybody who has that familiarity? Okay, I'm seeing no hands. Does anybody recognize anybody who was in the courtroom who has introduced themselves, any of the parties or attorneys? All right, I'm seeing no hands. Now you have been given a copy, of, well actually, did anybody recognize uh, anybody in the courtroom, I should say, not just the parties or attorneys? Okay, no hands. You have been given a copy of a list of potential witnesses, a rather long list, I acknowledge. Uh, and if you have reviewed it, you'll be asked when you are questioned individually whether you know anybody on that list. So please keep the list with you when you come in for your individual questioning. And if you've marked anybody, uh, we'd like to know that. Now, before I turn it over to the attorneys, uh, you have to keep in mind that one of the things they may not do in jury selection is to instruct you on the law. 
but I do want you to be aware of some of the basic concepts that apply in all criminal cases so that you may keep them in mind as you answer the court's and the attorney's questions. So I will instruct you as follows. First, the charges against the defendant are not evidence and they create no inference of guilt. No member of the jury should in any way permit himself or herself to be prejudiced against the defendant because a charge has been made against him or because he has been placed on trial. The defendant is presumed innocent of the charges made against him. And in order for you to find the defendant guilty, the state must prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. The defendant does not have to prove his innocence. The presumption of innocence remains with the defendant throughout the trial unless and until he has been proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt according to the law and the evidence admitted at trial. Proof beyond a reasonable doubt is such proof as ordinarily, ordinary persons would act upon in their most important affairs. A reasonable doubt is a doubt based upon reason and common sense. It does not mean a fanciful or capricious doubt, nor does it mean beyond all possibility of doubt. Now, if you serve on this jury, you and your fellow jurors will be the sole judges of whether a witness is to be believed and of the weight to be given their testimony. There are no hard and fast rules to guide you in this respect. But in determining believability and weight of testimony, jurors may take into consideration the witness's interest or lack of interest in the outcome, relationship to the parties, the ability and opportunity to know, remember, and relate the facts, their manner, their age and experience, their frankness and sincerity, or the lack thereof, the reasonableness or the unreasonableness of their testimony in light of all the other evidence in the case, and any other factors that bear on believability and weight. If on this jury, you should rely on the last analysis upon your own experience, good judgment, and common sense. Now, there are things you should not do during jury selection. You are not investigators. You are not to go out and do any looking, and you are not to ask people about this matter. You are not to use the internet to look for information about this case or about the law. Above all, you must not talk to anyone who is involved, the lawyers or the witnesses. Do not be offended if the attorneys, parties, witnesses, or spectators do not speak to you. They know it would be improper to contact you during the, um, except through the normal processes of jury selection, and they will confine themselves to a brief greeting. Now, during the selection process, your family and friends will be curious as to what you are doing. You may tell them you are a panel, uh, on a panel of potential jurors in a criminal case. And that is all you should tell them. And since that is all you should tell family and friends, that is all you should tell the general public. So, during these proceedings, please refrain from using Facebook, Twitter, or other social media to announce that you are a potential juror or to comment on this trial. You may access those social media tools, but please do not publish any information about the case or your thoughts about the case. You do not have to stay away from people and refuse to speak to them. Do whatever you wish, but do not talk about the case, and do not talk at all to anyone involved in it. Now, because of the nature of the charges, this case will receive media coverage. Do not read about this case in the newspapers or online, and do not listen to news about it on radio or television. Now, this trial, including jury selection, is being televised, but no video of you or any other juror will be taken at any time, now or during trial if you are selected. Also, your name will not be used in the courtroom. You will only be referred to by your random number. The audio of anything you say will be broadcast, unless we need to discuss something deeply personal or extremely sensitive or embarrassing, and I specifically order that the audio not be broadcast. In that case, you will still have to answer questions on the record, but without audio or video broadcast. Everyone, what are your thoughts on what you just watched? Leave them in the comments below. For the Dum Dum News Channel, I'm Dum Dum.